Blessings, beloved. Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer. I just have some uh, highlights regarding Pluto. Pluto, my favorite subject. So I've just been um, reflecting, as I pretty much always do, and uh, I'm just I'm just not sure that most people really understand just how powerful Pluto is. You know, we we understand the things that we kind of read and and hear. You know, from uh, from the left brain, right? Intellectually, you know, intelligently, we may understand um articles or presentations or whatever it may be um but honestly speaking when it comes to really understanding pluto you you really have to release the the mind construct around that the thoughts around that the beliefs around that because just like pretty much everything in life anyway, um, particularly with Pluto, we it's an experience of embodiment. <clears throat> well, that's the outer layer, actually. The inner layer is, is the soul, the soul feeling its way through different things. And specifically what I want to kind of point to is First of all, some points about Pluto, but also from the point of view of, let's say, transiting Pluto in your chart. It doesn't matter where it is. It's, it's still going to be the same kind of um, theme, undertone, uh, principle. Obviously, the house location is going to really speak very specifically to that area of life that's being... Um, intensely <laughs> changed and activated right so you know we have houses one through to 12 12 houses um let's just put up a chart so this is just a current chart for the present moment um and you can see transiting pluto is at 22 capricorn saturn's at 25 capricorn right next to it jupiter is 18 etc never mind this this is just a kind of a, a visual relative to pluto don't worry about everything else um see when uh transiting pluto enters a particular house in your chart which means a particular area of life it's going to be there a very long time you know um <laughs> Around about, you know, min the minimum might be 11, 12 years, the minimum, right? So the maximum could be 20 years. So it's a really, really long time. And that's, that's not a coincidence. It's not an accidental thing. What you need to kind of trace it back to is, okay, so where was Pluto when you were born? What house location was it in? Um because depending on the length of your life, naturally, um, let's just say that you lived a life that was around about 80 years of age, right? Let's just say that was, you know, the most you would live, which, you know, a lot of people do live to that age. Um, then you would experience Pluto going through around about half of your chart, your birth chart. So nobody experiences Pluto transiting their entire chart unless they live to be uh you know 248 years of age and i agree at some points in time <laughs> um people you know did live to that age and beyond you know there, there were different sort of periods ages like such as the golden age things of that nature where um the physical body relative to the state of consciousness at that time was able to live for much longer but um generally speaking in this day and age um yes there are some people that live to 110 even you know there are some countries where you might find people that 115 i've seen that 
Generally speaking, however, most people live till their late seventies, early eighties, right? That's the standard. So let's just kind of come to that point. Um, so as a result, you're only going to experience Pluto through around about half of your chart from the point of view of transits. And clearly its natal position is um, really important relative to what you are working through from a soul level, you know, relative to the soul's intentions, what it's here to evolve through. It doesn't mean that we evolve through it, you know, in one lifetime. And as Pluto continues to transit around the chart, as we, uh, from the time we are born and as we continue to um, go through life and it changes houses, then each house location is describing how that soul is evolving relative to Pluto and its natal position. So the natal position is the primary point and every house that it kind of moves through, you could say is an added area of life, an added layer that gets activated in order to ultimately serve the purpose of the soul intention, which is Pluto's uh, natal position. So as it transits through the chart, it moves through different houses. And those are areas of life that we face relative to Pluto are what are either assisting or hindering our ability to evolve. So that's one level. Of course, another level is uh, depending on what's going on in your birth chart relative to the position of, you know, all the different planets and asteroids, for instance. So Pluto, as it transits around the chart, it's going to likely um, form aspects to other planets, right? In some cases, it's going to be a conjunction, which is, you know, Pluto coming together with a particular planet in the same house, same sign, same degree. In some cases, it's going to be an opposition. In some cases, it's going to be a trine, a sextile, a quincunx or in conjunct, a quintile. You know, there are many different aspects, but the ones I've mentioned are the, the most common ones, let's say. And so every time Pluto touches a particular point, planet, or even asteroid in the chart, it's really bringing that planet to life in a very different way to what it normally operates. So that's another level. And the other thing that I want to kind of point to as well is that because Pluto connects to the underworld which another way of understanding that would be to say the unconscious structures and components within us um, Pluto correlates to the riches of the earth right so what's um, underneath the earth in a very deep, deep, deep space that we don't see necessarily, but we feel, Pluto uh, correlates to that part of the Earth as well. Um, so, you know, it, it connects to the, the, the riches of the world. So that can sometimes, in terms of a mundane external level, can translate to an individual um let's just say somebody had Pluto transiting their second house, that would be somebody who could totally regenerate themselves financially, for instance. There could be the opposite effect as well, where they could completely lose everything. But with Pluto, it's always a case of something that dies and leaves our existence, our, our life journey, um, there is always something else, something other that is uh, reborn. So it's never the case with Pluto that 
something ends and it finishes and it's done and dusted and that's it you know that's that's part of the process but the flip side to that coin is the rebirth that comes along right so that's another level um the other thing that i wanted to point to which i've had extremely personal experiences with this is um because Pluto correlates to the things that are hidden, right? Hidden from our conscious awareness, um, hidden from our so-called reality and our perspectives in life. It, uh, when it transits different areas of the chart and different uh, planetary bodies, what it can do is it can bring material uh, including people from the past back into your life. And that can be people from the past that you've had interactions with this lifetime and or people, souls that you've had um, connections with in previous lifetimes. And the reason that these people reappear, so... In other words, Pluto correlates to things that reappear in your life. And the reason for the reappearance is because relative to the soul's desires in terms of its evolution and growth, there is something that is incomplete. And that soul or that person that reappears, as it were, in your life shows up um for the reason of identifying what needs to be worked through um what needs to be evolved through and what needs to complete and finish and die with this situation and so depending on the individual and the circumstances and, you know, whether it's a person from this lifetime or a previous lifetime, there's so many different sort of um, variables, right? Depending on all of those things and depending on the soul, you, yourself, for instance, who's having this transit, uh, will determine and define how you respond to the situation. And it's not an easy situation. This is the reason I'm doing this recording because I've been reflecting on this for a very long time, actually. And um, there's been very specific matters in my own life the last couple of years that have um, that have showed up that I have had to do the Pluto thing, um, which is to try and understand from my own soul's desires and intentions what is the purpose of this situation this individual showing up or reappearing and so forth and also having to have to have let another soul um, transcend out of my life right so I've had kind of both ends of the spectrum in the sense of I've had to let someone go that has been the most important connection for me in my life, which is my father. And some of you are aware of that. Some of you are not. Um, in addition to that, while that was happening and even until this day, I have um, had certain souls re reappear in my life who I've had connections with actually in this lifetime many many years ago but I also know that I've had connections with them in previous lifetimes so given I met these individuals when I was really super super young I was just a kid virtually and the interaction at those times with those souls was it was completely Pluto <laughs> Pluto Venus Mars really um and so, of course, my response and reaction was um, very unevolved because I was so young in certain ways, right? In, in other ways, um, I was pretty aware as well. Point being, years later, 
these souls come back into my life, which is saying to me that there is something that I have not um, resolved within myself. There is something further to evolve within myself and these souls play a very important part in that picture. And so I'm left in a position where I, I need to ask these very authentic, raw, honest questions um, that are beyond the ego, beyond the right and wrong, good or bad, um, judgment, you know, um, um, this is great, this is not great, this feels good, this doesn't feel good, you know, all that shit, sorry, <laughs> which, yeah, I, I get is important, but all of that stuff is that's just kind of like one layer right it's one layer that really connects to you could say the senses of the body right um passions desires um security safety um connection you know whatever it may be on those kind of levels and then there's the other level where one needs to ask themselves, okay, so what is really going on here? Why has this situation uh, re-emerged back in my life? What, what do I need to really um, learn from this that I didn't learn previously? So I wanted to just kind of bring these points um, home. <laughs> I wanted to highlight them through this uh, brief presentation because I know there are a lot of you out there that would be in the exact same situation and what I'm here to tell you is that I I totally empathize with you and I can feel what you're going through because I have gone through it and I am going through it and it's really not an easy situation and it's easier when you lie to yourself when you um deflect displace project deny it's easier at least from the level of not taking ownership of what you need to face yourself right um doesn't mean it makes the situation easy it can actually be very volatile and very complex as well right on the other hand when you're able to stand back from the situation and the person, the soul, the reappearance of whoever it is or whatever it is that's come back into your life, I think that the only way that you can truly recognize what it is you need to resolve is through some kind of position of attachment, right? And of course, with awareness, and it's it's just it's just simply not an easy thing, right? This is another reason I'm doing this recording because when it comes to Pluto, Pluto is um it's a situation where it, the the impulses, uh, the 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 passion, the intensity, um, the obsession, the um, the really intense feelings can be so overwhelming and can completely overtake you and when that happens you you're you're just in this vortex and you're just spinning out of control <laughs> so it's challenging that i know um <clears throat> however like i said if if you had um evolved out of this kind of lesson that your soul is wanting to grow from the situation of the person would not be reappearing in your life so for instance i've got transiting pluto conjunct my mars okay and i've had it all year um and i've had two souls come back into my life that i've had interactions with in the past and i'm talking past as in like a very very long time ago um and so, you know, it leaves me in this position. And, and I'm being very honest by sharing this um, simply because I know there will be a lot of people in a very similar situation. So 
point being, when Pluto transits around your chart, there's a very specific transformation that needs to happen in your life relative to the house that it's transiting. When it aspects a planet in that house, that brings in a whole other layer and dimension. Of course, if it's Mars or Venus, it's really got to do with relationships, okay? A lot of other things as well, but it's got to do with relationships, love, passion, you know, all that. Um, and then it's about, and also third to that would be the reappearance of certain situations, people, souls coming back into your life. There's, there's, there's no way, okay, somebody, somebody or something is going to come back into your life if you have resolved it, okay? So we need to recognize that when it happens. It's not a coincidence. It's not a random thing. <laughs> it's quite um, purposeful relative to what the soul still needs to work on. So Pluto correlates to the soul, to what's hidden to the past, to things that reappear back in your life and to self-empowerment, disempowerment, transformation, um, confronting your deepest fears, uh, connecting to your deepest desires and uh, passions. So it correlates to a lot of different things. But the, the, the point to this particular presentation was to just remind people that um, when you are working with Pluto energy, it's it's not a walk in the park, and it um, it takes a lot of your energy to work through it. Okay, like Pluto is not going to just hand something over to you and say, "There you go, um, you're totally loved, you're totally blessed." You know, have a great time going by a bottle of wine Pluto is going to ask you to like strip back strip bare naked right and take a totally deep 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 examination into yourself and whatever is presenting around you um, and it will also ask you to die to something and that is an absolute fundamental truth because I have experienced it, right? So when it comes to Pluto, we, um, we can't resist it. We can't deny it. And, I mean, we can only work with it as best as we can, right, relative to our own abilities, resources, consciousness, awareness, and so forth. But it is an undeniable force and source that will not leave you without taking something away, okay, and also um, bringing something back or helping you give birth to something completely new, which is pretty amazing. So I'll leave it there. And, um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear in your um, thoughts or experiences or perspectives. Uh, so feel free to share with each other and with myself. And um, I'll uh, see you guys very, very soon. Much love. Bye for now.